Bonjour. In prior videos, we have worked several examples involving Carnot maps and three or four input canonical SOP equations. But there's more to the story. In this video, we'll introduce how to work with non-canonical SOP equations, what to do when all the squares are filled, and provide a glimpse at using k-maps for POS equations. What do we do in this situation, where we are given an equation in standard, but not canonical, SOP form? We could take the long approach of algebraically expanding each product term so that they include all of the input variables, but it's better if we go straight from the equation to filling in the k-map. To do this, look at each product term individually and fill in all squares where that product term is true. Our first product term is simply z. So on the k-map, identify each square where z equals one, regardless of x and y. The first square is here. The next square is right next to it. And both squares underneath also have z equal to one. So that single product term led to four squares being filled in. In general, the simpler the product term, the more squares we can fill in. This makes sense, right? Since x and y are not part of this term, that means they can be either zero or one, which covers more squares in the map. Now for the x prime y term. Here, z does not matter, and we look for the squares where x equals zero and y equals one x is zero along this top row, and y is one in these two columns. So these two squares receive a one. We already have a one filled into this square from the previous product term. That's fine, it just remains a one. There's no such thing as extra true. And for the last term, x prime, we would fill in ones along the entire top row. Why? Because in every one of these squares, x equals zero regardless of y or z. So this product term on its own would cover four squares, but there's a lot of overlap, so it only looks like we add this leftmost one. Now that the k-map is filled in, we make our groups. Here, there are two groups of four. The brown skinny group gives the product term x prime. The purple fat group gives the product term z. And there we have the final equation. With a simple example like this, it would have been quicker to avoid the Carnot map and simply apply Boolean algebra rule 10 to absorb the x prime y term into x prime. But you can see the general idea of working with a non-canonical SOP equation. Note how what we did with the k-map is essentially identical to algebraically expanding to canonical SOP form. If we were to expand the given equation, we would need to and z with x or x prime and y or y prime. How many min terms would this give us? Four. And how many squares did we fill in on the map? Four. Similarly, the x prime y term would be anded by z or z prime. Algebraically, that would give us two min terms. On that map, it would let us fill in two squares. Remember, each square on a k-map represents a min term. Here's another example, this one with four input variables. Beginning with the x, y prime term, we identify squares where x equals one and y equals zero. x equals one in these two rows, y equals zero in these two columns. So all four of these squares get filled in. For the wxy term, we look for the squares where all three of those variables are true, regardless of z. w and x are both one in this row. y is one in these two columns. So these two squares get filled in. We repeat the process for the remaining two product terms. w prime y prime would cover all four squares in the top left corner. There is some overlap with previous ones. And wxz would cover these two middle ones. Those are already filled in, so that's a big clue that this wxz does not contribute any new information, 
and will probably disappear in the simplified equation. After filling in the K-map, we identify these two groups of four. The brown group gives us the product term WX, and the purple group gives us W prime Y prime. So here is the final equation. Shifting gears, let's talk about a unique case. What happens when all the squares of a map are filled in? Well, that represents the simplest possible logic equation. If all the squares are ones, then it does not matter what the inputs are. The output is always true. So the function would simply be the output variable equals one. Similarly, if all the squares were blank or zeros, the function would be the output variable equals zero. One final slide here. So far, we have exclusively discussed Carnot maps in regards to sum of products form. I did that on purpose. I've found that most people more naturally understand and or logic as opposed to or and. It is easier to think either this group is true or that group is true or that group is true in order to make a true output but we could flip everything around and consider k-maps from the product of sums perspective. Let's compare the two. The left side is a summary of everything we have covered already. You see that for SOP form, we group the ones, and each group leads to a product term, with inputs of zero giving a complemented literal. The right side is what's new. For product of sums form, we group the zeros. Notice those two groups in the k-map below. Each group will lead to a sum term. Within that sum term, an input zero gives an uncomplemented literal, and an input one gives a complemented literal. Notice here in the middle group that x is always zero, so the sum term includes x. And z is always one, so the sum term includes z prime. Once we obtain the sum terms, then we and all of them together to make the final simplified equation. This side-by-side -side comparison makes it easy to see how each step of the process is opposite for the two forms, but in the end we get logically identical expressions. You can verify that in this example by directly applying Boolean algebra rule 12.